Thank you, Dan, for the wonderful introduction and for inviting me to be here today. It is wonderful to be back at NC State, and it is awesome to be back with other students from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Wow, a full house with standing room only for a graduation. This is definitely a night to remember. Congratulations to all of you. Today, I would like to welcome you to the next phase of your life. That phase where your achievements will largely be self-driven, where you learn how to gauge your success without the feedback loop of a GPA. It's that phase when you learn how to come to your boss with solutions and not problems, where you learn to transition from telling your professors that you can't do what they asked you to do because you haven't been taught yet, to telling your bosses that you can definitely do what they just asked you to do yet, and then run back to your office and get on Wikipedia. It's that phase where you're guaranteed to have at least one nightmare that you have to come back because there's some requirement you somehow didn't fulfill. But don't worry, I can guarantee you are graduating. In, it's that phase where every time you tell someone that you majored in electrical engineering, their eyes get big and you can tell that a part of them is in awe. And every time you tell them you majored in computer engineering, they ask you if you can fix their laptop. And then there's that question you like most of all. Every time someone asks you where you went to school, you get to say NC State. Yeah, I love that question. In this phase, having your degree is just the beginning because now the world gets a lot more open-ended. You get to start your own path. Today, I would like to talk about three mantras that have guided me as I've navigated this phase. They build towards a common goal, which is this, genuine happiness and personal fulfillment. Because all of those other things, confidence, employment, success, leadership, they all start with genuine happiness and personal fulfillment. Focusing on that goal is the reason why I can stand here today, not only as a graduate of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at NC State, but as a member of the United States Astronaut Corps, which is a dream I've had for nearly my entire life. The first, do what scares you. Something that scares you is probably right on the edge of what you are capable of if you really apply yourself. And achieving that thing is the most rewarding achievement of all. When I was a student here, I found that I could pretty easily manage my studies and grades. But what scared me was reaching outside of that comfortable academic bubble. And so I took rock climbing for a PE credit. I've saved up from my job that I had on the Kmart of Western Boulevard, and I went to Scotland over the summer. I joined Engineers Without Borders. And since I had told my advisor, Cecilia Townsend, that I wanted to be an astronaut, I had to take on the biggest fear of all for an introverted electrical engineering student. Networking. I had to talk to people and put myself out there. But the good news is, it ended up landing me an internship in NASA, which turned into a full-time job after graduation. I was helping to build detectors for X-ray telescopes in space. That student who would sit quietly for hours in the Unity computer lab had to figure out how to get things done with teams of people from technicians to PhD astrophysicists. Circuit design and writing software was not the scary part. But I ended up feeling comfortable with that after a few years. And then I knew it was time to take on another fear. I had always been fascinated by Antarctica, and I found a job posted online there for a cryogenics technician. Now, despite knowing very little about cryogenics, I ended up getting myself an interview. And in the first hour of that interview, I learned three things. There had never been a cryogenics technician as young as me. There had never been a woman cryogenics technician and I knew nothing about being a cryogenics technician. But I towed the line and they must have found some reason to have faith in me because a few months later, I found myself stepping off of a military aircraft at the South Pole. And we had to wear earplugs and ski goggles because the plane was so loud and it was so cold and no one could talk to each other. And I felt completely isolated. 
And to make matters worse, I lost all feeling in my hands within about 30 seconds of getting off the plane because it was minus 66 degrees. And being from North Carolina, I had barely even shoveled snow in my life. But then it turned out one year later, I had done it. I ended up being the first cryogenics technician who got the liquid helium supply to last throughout the entire winter, which enabled all of the science at the telescopes to happen. So my determination to take on what scared me continued through many turns, teaching ocean search and rescue courses on the Antarctic Peninsula, being a lead subsystem engineer for a space science instrument, and running a remote science base on a tiny island in the middle of the South Pacific. And then one day, about two years ago, I found myself inside a pressurized spacesuit with hundreds of pounds of tools and gear strapped to me and a real live spacesuit helmet on. I couldn't talk to the people around me and I could only hear the voice of the test conductor. I couldn't even scratch my own nose, but I was about to do my first spacewalk training session, which we had heard was the metabolic equivalent of running a marathon. I was strapped into a stand on a platform that they were lowering by crane into a 40 foot deep pool that had an entire mock-up of the International Space Station in it. And I was watching the water level rise over my helmet visor. And then I was literally in over my head. And I realized I couldn't mess this up. And then six hours later, back on the poolside, I realized I had done it. I had become an astronaut. And it wasn't because of my fears. It wasn't despite my fears, but because of them. The second mantra I have for you is live the life you imagine. Follow your passions. When you do that, you are not only guaranteed to find genuine fulfillment, but to excel and to give back to the world in the maximum way possible and to find a path that leads to what you were meant for. My path was about as unconventional as they get, inspired by the images I had of my future life when I was young. I went out and worked on a farm I studied abroad in Ghana. I left a perfectly good engineering job at NASA to work at the South Pole. And although these things may not have always been easy to explain to my mom, it turned out being instrumental in the development of my career. Working on the farm taught me that it is possible to keep pushing yourself even when you don't think you can. Ghana gave me my first taste of worldly perspective that I really needed to work across cultures. Living at the South Pole was the single most life-shaping endeavor I have ever taken on. I had also always seen myself having some tangible connection to something studying the cosmos. And although it took two different jobs as an electrical engineer working on NASA missions, five years ago, I watched a rocket launch that was carrying something that I had brought from notebook sketches to CAD drawings to prototype to real spaceflight hardware. It was launching on a mission called Juno to Jupiter, and it's actually arriving there this summer to start studying things about the formation of our solar system. I have been so committed to following my passions that I even completely ignored some of the conventional wisdom about how to become an astronaut. For example, I wasn't particularly into flying. I mean, it was all right, but I would have much rather be in the outdoors than inside a noisy cockpit. So I spent my free time learning technical rock climbing. Instead of becoming a private pilot, I figured that if I lived my life according to some checklist just to become an astronaut, then I was too self-focused to be worthy of being an astronaut. I was convinced that if I got there, it would be because my passions ended up making me the right person for the job. And it came about because I realized that I had always envisioned myself exploring somewhere new. Since I opened my first National Geographic magazine, I was enthralled with the frontiers of both knowledge and the world. I would cut out maps of Antarctica and put them on the walls of my room even when I was in middle school. I had posters of space up on my walls too. And so those childhood images formed what I was passionate about and that formed my path. Maybe your mind's eye sees you having a role in the medical field designing life-saving equipment, or modeling neural pathways. Maybe you're at a lab bench, 
testing your latest pro prototype. Maybe you're watching a student's eyes light up. Maybe it's fast-paced and at the forefronts, or maybe it's simple, orderly, and brainy. Maybe you're launching a startup from your basement. Even if you aren't sure what you see, some image of your future self is there. And as you move into this next phase, you may find yourself at various crossroads. What job to take? To go back to school or to stay in the workforce? What professional ladder to climb? At every turn, there are decisions that could change your life dramatically. When you get really stumped and you don't know which path to take, go back to fifth grade. What do you love? What looks like the life you envisioned? E.M. Forster said it best, only connect the prose and the poetry and both will be exalted. Your degree is your prose. You add the poetry. My final item, encourage those around you. We often focus on those who support us, and that is important. But true fulfillment comes from being one of those people for someone else. I am extremely fortunate to have a great family, supportive parents, incredible friends, and countless professors, teachers, advisors, and coaches along the way who have helped me. But there's one moment that has stood out. While I was working that first job at NASA, I took a part-time job as adjunct faculty at a community college teaching physics lab. And the professor I worked for was a really amazing person. And when I let him know that I was gonna have to leave to go to Antarctica, he said something to me that I will never forget. He looked me squarely in the eye and he said, I know you're gonna do something great one day. And I'm not sure where he got that idea, <laughs> But he said it so genuinely that it really sunk in. And I actually would hear it replaying in my head throughout the years when I needed it. So much so that sometimes I wondered, what would I have done if I hadn't ever heard those words? And that is why I'm telling you to say those words to each other. You can even say them to yourself. You are going to be the boss whose goal it is to provide an environment where those working for you are inspired themselves to be great. You're going to be the coworker that knows that when the whole team is doing their best, everyone achieves the most reward. You are going to be the spouse that recognizes that it's more rewarding to put down your smartphone and be fully present with your family. You are going to be rewarded and genuinely fulfilled by your focus on lifting up those around you by not being afraid to be outwardly encouraging. And so, as you move into this next phase where you look back on this day that commemorates your years of hard work, yes, you are going to think about how glad you are that you get to now build hardware for a real company instead of doing problem sets. You're gonna think about how cool it is that you know how to do a Fourier transform but you're never actually gonna have to do one again. <laughs> but also think about finding genuine happiness and personal fulfillment. You will be proud of achieving the things that scared you. You will be proud of becoming the person you imagined yourself to be. And you will be proud of those around you. And not least of all, you will be proud to be a graduate of the best department of the best university in this great state, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at NC State. Congratulations and thank you.